This is the Forex Q&A podcast. This is VP, professional Forex prop trader here in the United States, answering your user-submitted Forex trading-related questions every Monday morning. Now, if you have watched every video and listened to every podcast I have ever done and you still have a question left over, only if this situation is true, what you do is go to nononsenseforex.com slash askvp, fill out the form, ask me whatever that question was, and I will get back to you typically within 48 hours. So one big announcement before we get into the question, or actually questions, plural, this week. Uh, I am sending something out to my email list, which I have not done in a while. Um, it's been so long since I have, a lot of people are saying, am I still on your email list? I'm not getting things. Uh, well, I don't send things out very often, and that's kind of been a bad move on my part. This whole email list thing is the, probably the one thing I can look back on and say I really kind of misplayed here. Uh, my whole idea was to really send things out every two months, uh, maybe one month if I had something really cool that I wanted to send. But I'm really trying to space this out a bit uh, because nobody's going to put a bunch of time in trying to find these great indicators if they know that I'm just going to start sending a bunch out directly to them. Uh, so to combat that, I'm really spacing it out. And with the full understanding that a lot of these indicators I sent to you may not work in the system you're using. Just because it's good to me doesn't mean it's going to work really well for you. And people are starting to see that. Some people use the ones I send them. Some people are like, yeah, this, this thing really does not apply to the system I'm putting together at all. So the ones that are sitting there lazy just waiting for me to send them something are typically not getting what they thought they were getting. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's still a cool-ass indicator that I'm sending out this week. Just like every uh, every other time I send something out, it's usually pretty helpful. It's, it's at the very least something you can keep around. And I have a top 100 indicator coming your way this week. Now, uh, back to the whole part about this email list being the, the bane of my existence here. Uh, I did not expect to get this big at all. I did not expect this channel to get big. I really had no idea how many other people out there were sick and frustrated of the Forex education that was being provided to them at this point. And turns out it was a lot more of you than I thought. And this list has gotten really big and really expensive. And on top of that, it's been a lot of people asking, why am I not on it, even though they are on it, you know, signing up with multiple addresses, big old, big old mess. So listen to me closely here. This week, I am sending out an email to everybody on my list. It is going to be titled in big capital letters, do not reply. Now, does everybody know what that means? Good, because last time, even though my list was much smaller, I still got 12 replies from people saying thank you, from people asking questions about it, whatever the case was. You don't have to thank me. Your patronage is thanks enough. Uh, the reason I put that in big letters and the reason I shut down Ask VP the last three days of the week at least is because it was just getting out of control and it was consuming way too much of my time answering questions and things like that. So anything I can do to minimize my inbox I am going to do. Uh, yet there are still a lot of people out there that just don't like following directions at all. So I'm doing everything I can right now to say, hey, look, this week, expect something in your inbox that says do not reply in big letters. That is me. I am sending you an indicator. Download it. Enjoy it. Do what you can with it. Um, but please do not respond back in that email. And then also, if you don't get something by, let's say, this Friday, do this. Don't contact me saying, where is it? Why am I not on your list? Just go to nononsenseforex.com and fill out that little form again. Um, you will be taken directly to the thank you page, which will have the indicator and the video on it. And you should be well and good on the list for the future. And also check your junk mail and spam. That should be obvious, but I still got to say it. Um, yeah, the email provider I had months ago was terrible and it wasn't getting everybody on and that was a problem uh, but the easiest way to fix this is to just sign up if you don't receive it and uh, all should be good and fine from this point on also my current email service provider will take you out of the system if you have not opened anything from me two times in a row um, that's one way to keep my list down a bit so you might have gotten booted off that way but like I said you can always get right back on so get ready, traders. Indicator coming your way this week. It is a top 100 indicator, and I hope it serves you well. 
It is the Forex Q&A podcast, and we have four questions this week. And uh, when I say rapid fire, we're not going like true rapid fire lightning round type questions. Um, but four questions that were probably just too quick and easy as far as an answer goes to make an entire podcast out of. And I get all of these questions quite a bit, so I'm not going to attach a name to them, but I think we'll just go through all four and answer them all right here, because a lot of you might have had these questions floating around in your head as well. So let us jump right into it. Question number one, do you approach trading on Fridays any different than you do any other day? So out of the four questions we're going over today, this is the one I get from people that have not consumed all the material, even though you're supposed to do that, even though on the form you check a little box saying that you've done that. I still get this question quite a bit. We've talked about this. When you trade this way, when you trade the daily chart, you can trade on Fridays just like you would any other day. It doesn't matter. Uh, now, what about weekend gapping? Okay, well, here's my response to that. Again, when you trade the daily chart, it doesn't matter. If the gap goes against you, nine out of 10 times, we can absorb that and let price do what it was going to do anyway. The people out there trading on the one hour chart or the 15 minute chart, they, they really, really got to worry about gaps because that can wipe them out in a hurry and then some, uh, but not us. Typically, the amount we are risking uh, ATR wise, you know, the pips are large enough to the point to where if we take, you know, anywhere from 50 to 100 points of a hit just based on gapping, um, we can often absorb that. And a lot of times, what you see are those gaps just knocking people's stop losses out so the banks can take price where they were going to take it in the first place. And with a good technical analysis system, we are more often than we are not keen to what that direction is actually going to be. Uh, and this is really nice. We don't have to adjust anything. We can trade the exact same way every single time. Now, here's the thing about weekend gapping. It doesn't really happen all that often. And when it does, there's a really good chance it's not even going to affect any of the currency pairs that you're in. We as traders just think it happens more than it actually does because those rare times that we got burnt by it, we never forget. It's really easy to forget all the times where it doesn't happen at all because that didn't affect us. Uh, but when it does, we get so angry and we have this emotional reaction to it, it completely screws with our ability to have a wide angle view to really zoom out and say, hey, this actually doesn't happen a lot. And when it does, it barely affects me. And it's for those reasons that a lot of daily chart traders are afraid to put in trades on a Friday. And there's no need for this. Uh, I have one good anecdote that I think goes along with this. I was uh, having lunch with a friend of mine about a year ago that I worked with about 10 years prior in restaurants. And I don't know how we got on the subject so much, but, but I asked him, I said, okay, out of the 10 best restaurant guests you have had in your entire career, how many of them can you think of right now? And he sat there and he thought about it. And he's like, wow, it really not, definitely not all 10, you know, maybe, I don't know, three or four. Uh, and I said, yeah, probably me too. Uh, and it's funny how that is. Uh, but then I asked him, I said, okay, out of the 20 worst guests you have ever had, how many of those do you think you could recall? And it was so funny, without hesitating, he said, I remember all 20 of those motherfuckers vividly. <laughs> that's, that's just how it is. I mean, that's how our minds are wired. Uh, those negative emotions are so strong, they come in and short circuit our brains when it comes to really trying to see the big picture here. And I think that example ties in really well with traders' fear of weekend gaps. Uh, if you get your stop loss knocked out by one, you know, you know write it off. Odds are it's not going to happen again for quite a while. Uh, but what's way worse is the real possibility that you're going to miss out on a lot of really good trades that start on a Sunday or a Monday by being bashful on Friday. Don't do it. Trade the same way every time. Question number two and a very interesting one. Can my main confirmation indicator and my exit indicator be the same thing? 
Now, for those of you brand new to the podcast, you're not going to know what this is. But for those of you who have been with us from the start and have been putting this system together, here's my answer. Yes, it absolutely can be. And full disclosure, as of right now, mine is. My main confirmation indicator also doubles as my exit indicator. Wasn't always that way. I had plenty of success having them separate. Uh, but as I told you before, I'm always trying to improve on what I have. And as it stands right now, they are one and the same. Now, do I think this should change the way you search and test your indicators right now? No, I do not. I think that would be a real mistake. Uh, but for those of you out there who are wondering, uh, my answer is yes, absolutely. And mine currently is. Moving on to question number three. How many trades should I have per week, per month, per year, whatever the case is, for the best results? And my answer here, which people don't really like because they want a number they can actually use or base off of, but my answer here is there is no answer. It's not about quantity. It can be a lot of trades or a little trades. ROI, return on investment, is your number one metric. If you have a system that gives you 10 trades for an entire year, and you have another system that gives you 500 trades for a year, one is not better than the other, simply based on the amount of trades you're taking. Test them out, and whichever one gives you the higher percentage return at the end of the year is your winner. I mean, people ask me about how many trades do you take a week, and I'm like, I don't even know. So, I mean, the weeks are so different from one to another. You know, Some weeks it's zero, some weeks it's six or seven. I would say probably on the average two, um, but that doesn't mean you should base your system off of that. Our systems are different. They're based on the same things, but uh, the tools and the methods we are using to get to the end goal are going to be different. So don't restrict yourself by saying, hey, I am looking for something that gives me about two trades a week. That's a really bad move. And it's limiting your creativity. It's limiting your ability to go out there and create the best system for you. I've said it from the start. My goal is to make you better than me. And you're not going to be able to do that if you copy letter for letter what I do. I give you the structure and you run with it. And that structure does not include how many trades you should be taking per week, per month, per year. However many get you to the highest rate of return. That's your answer. And you'll only know that answer by testing everything out. And the final question for episode 38 is, do you ever worry that the people who trade the no-nonsense Forex way are going to one day become the majority and therefore end up on the big bank's radar, therefore screwing up everything we're trying to do? And uh, I get this question quite a bit. And it, it's a thoughtful question, uh, but it's also a very short-sighted question, and I'll tell you why. Um, you know, even though this channel has gotten big in a hurry, uh, we are, guys, we are a drop in the bucket in the grand scheme of things here. It is still a 4 to $5 trillion a day market, and I know Spot Forex is a small portion of that, but still. If you were to take every single person who subscribes to my material and all of us at one time were to trade one way on one currency pair. I would be willing to bet that if you combine that money, it's, I mean, this isn't saying anything bad about us. We're just, you know, we're all just regular people here, but I would bet a pretty good chunk of money to say that the money risked by all of us at this point in time right now still would not equal the amount of money that one single hedge fund would be able to risk on the exact same trade. Now, I don't know if this is really true, um, but if I was a betting man, and I am, and you were to give me even odds on that bet, I would take the hedge fund. And there's a lot of hedge funds out there. So to drill down even further, if you take all my YouTube subscribers right now, just take that for example, uh, a small chunk of them are just haters that subscribe and follow me around and give me thumbs down and little poopy pants comments. So they're not trading the way we are. Uh, a good other chunk are people who just subscribe because they liked one video and never really watched any other videos. Um, another chunk are bots. I think there's a stat out that for anybody that has X amount of subscribers that you can count 
a good 10 to 15% of them are just bots uh, that aren't even real people. Um, then another chunk of people, and I can certainly attest to this, are people that are terrible at following directions. So we won't have to worry about them. And then I'd say an even bigger chunk are people that really are taking parts out of what I say and combining it with what they're already using. Uh, I'll get emails from people all the time saying, hey, I love your material. Um, I've read it all. Uh, what do you think of this really cool setup I have on the five-minute chart? And I'm like, uh, okay, I guess it's fine, <laughs> but I really can't comment on a five-minute chart. Um, but you're totally allowed to do that. You, know, you take the material and do whatever you like with it. Um, all I'm really doing here is telling you what has worked for me and why, and that's it. Um, but for those who are all in and they're trying to do things exactly the way I talk about, um, because I don't give away my exact algorithm, I just give you the structure and let you run with it. Everybody's system's going to be different. We are never, out, out of all of those remaining people, we are never going to be entering trades and particular currency pairs all at the same time. So even if this channel grows to be 10 times its actual size, you're still at the end of the day taking a very small portion of the entire spot forex market and you're making it even a fraction of that when it comes to how many of us are going behind one particular currency one way so rest easy traders even uh, even if the desired outcome that i am hoping for many of you i'm hoping to create future prop traders and people who can trade their own accounts and make a ton of money and people who can create their own client base um, even after those things happen it's still only going to happen for a small amount of you. It's just the reality of it. Um, is our percentage going to be a lot higher than the percentage that's out there right now with the price action crowd and the no money management crowd and the no psychology crowd? Uh, I, I would certainly hope so. I think it's going to be much higher. Uh, but it certainly won't be a majority. The percentage is still going to be fairly small. So rest easy, traders. We're never going to really get on the big bank's radar, no matter how big we get. Uh, but I can say with certainty that everybody who's going to fall into that small percentage is going to end up being the people that put in the work, that put in more work than everybody else did. Uh, so now before we end this, I do know what video is going to come out on Thursday, and it is a fairly highly requested video. I don't know if it's in the top three, top five, as far as requests go. And requests don't matter. This is not a jukebox. I mean, the, what, the videos come out when they come out. Uh, but just so you know, uh, this has been asked for many times, and it is coming out on Thursday. So get ready for that. Um, but I meant what I said about the work. So just remember, traders, if you're not out there being relentless on this every single day, understand that you're competing with traders who are, and that does not bode well for you. So get to work. Do it now. Do it always. Go get it.